I don't want to get into sort of you know the problems with the techniques, but there are problems that are developing in these animals after that these techniques are done. Now you've seen this, and you've even taught me about some of these things yourself, and now you have protocols to help these. Can you explain that a little bit better? Well, I'm totally on board with you. I grew up in a rescue, so I, I know the problems with overpopulation. But I also know that it's uh, a quick fix to say we have a problem with overpopulation. We have all these animals that, you know, are in these kill shelters. But the number one reason for euthanasia right now is skin disease. So we, can, we, just, we, we just have blinkers on. And I, I am... You know, I'm a probably a, as controversial person as you would find. <laughs> but to say, to spay and neuter eight-week-old animals, in my opinion, is we just haven't thought it out. Maybe in the Bahamas, I, I was, you know, really directly um, helping out a, a situation in the Bahamas where that's what they do. But in general, spaying and neutering a puppy that someone's going to go and buy at that age is in five years from now i'm gonna i would bet anything we're gonna see so many animals in shelters to be euthanized because they've got torn cruciate ligaments because they've got severe skin disease because they have cushings but when they're when they're two years old people can't afford the vet care so these animals are going to be given up and euthanized anyways because they're going to have uh, defects from not being able to to grow normally. So so what we're going to look at we're looking at really really early early spay and neuters and then we're looking at you know can people be responsible enough to not spay and neuter their dogs? Can they wait at least until they're a year? There's there's it's just not a one solution thing and every single time anyone thinks that there's one solution there's usually a ton of fallout from that we haven't thought about it properly so what you know for me you know just just treating so many animals and seeing so much sickness just think about it how healthy would we be if we didn't have our growth and our sex hormones at the age of six Right. It's it is people don't understand that we're removing uteruses, we're removing testicles, we're removing things that are that are vital for a healthy animal to stay healthy. One of the reasons that I started the protocol was not even actually for dogs, it was for cats. And I worked with a very large large rescue group in NBC. When a cat is neutered young, their urethra is microscopic so the amount of cats that you see male cats blocking so i decided that there's got to be a way we have to do it especially with cats feral cats and stuff but what from a homeopathic point of view how can i help this because you can't put their uterus back in you can't reattach their testicles so how was i going to do it so i thought from a homeopathic perspective i looked at actually giving them the feline testy, uh, feline ovaries, canine ovaries, and canine testes. And what, with the hopes, I didn't know if it would work or not, but with the hopes that you were giving a substance, like we talked about with homeopathy, that would the body would recognize to be able to somehow uh, replicate. Sure. Right? So I started doing this with these cats, and the incidence of male cats becoming blocked decreased drastically. Wow. So I started doing it with puppies and kittens and I'm telling you it, it really it doesn't makes a difference and there's there's no side effects to it if either it's going to work or it's not going to work.